Romans 12 and 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Please read verse 2 with me out loud. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thank you, Lord. I want us to begin this evening a, uh, a new series entitled Transformed. Transformed. Can we be transformed? Right here it says so. Transformed. Now, what did he tell us not to be? Conformed. Don't be what? Conformed. Conformed to the world, this world. Don't, don't be conformed to this world. Why would the Lord tell you, don't be conformed to that? Because there's a danger that you will be if you don't make an effort not to be. But instead of being conformed to this world, what did he say to be? Be transformed. Transformed. How I many like the idea of being transformed? Hallelujah. Conformed. Don't even sound good, does it? <laughs> Who wants to be conformed? No. Who wants to be transformed? And how is it that we can be and will be transformed? By the renewing of our mind. Glory to God. And what is the result of this being transformed? Read the rest of the verse. That you may what? Prove has to do with uh, proving and testing and discerning. And, and uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Identifying. What is the good, acceptable, and perfect what? Will. will of God. Is anybody in here interested in the will of God? Yes, Finding the will of God. Knowing the will of God. Doing the will of God. I became convinced in my early teens as a teenager that if I could find out the will of God... I had it made. <laughs> and now, just a few years later, what are you laughing about? <laughs> I know it's true. I know it's true. Well, because I had already determined if, if I found the will of God, I was going to do it. And I just knew if I'd do the will of God, I'd be okay. The Lord would take care of me. He'd provide for me. It would work out right. Yes. Do you believe the same thing? Yes. And isn't it sad that there's so many Christians that seem bewildered about the will of God? No thing. I mean, I talk to, have talked to people so many times, ministers included, wondering if this is the will of God. Wondering if that's the will of God. Looking for the will of God. Do you think this is the will of God? Is it the will of God to do this? Maybe this is not the will of God. I thought this was the will of God. I guess not. <laughs> this ought not be. Our Father God is not hiding His will from us. He's not making it hard to understand or perceive. 
The pro I mean, if he hadn't wanted us to know his will, he'd have never given us this book. And he'd never given us the author of the book to live in us 24 7 to help us get it. He's done everything that we would ever need to get it. So why then? So much problem, so much ignorance, so much confusion about it. Right here is the problem. If our thinking was already okay, our minds would not need to be renewed. renewed. Right. <laughs> hmm? Do you, do I, do we need to change our thinking? Yes. Do we, do our minds need to be renewed? Yes. Renewed. Yes. That word renew means renovate. <laughs> like what we did when we moved in here and we tore out all the walls. <laughs> ripped, took out all the chairs and ripped up part of the floor and, and how many know there's some, something needs to come into your mind and rip some stuff out? <laughs> oh, there needs to be some demolition in your mind. In my mind. Of what? Of stuff we got from this world. Conformity. We should not think like everybody else on the planet. If we do, we're acting like unsaved people. Let me, let me read some other verses. Uh, excuse me, other translations of this verse. New Living Translation. The New Living says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Amen. Say, let God transform you. Let God transform you like the sound of that? Yes. Let God transform you into a new person. By changing the way you think. Is it that simple? That if our, the way we think is changed, it'll change us into a different person. Is that true? Transformed. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you. Anybody interested in this at all? Amen. Glory to God. I think we ought to get excited about this verse right now because we have found how to become a different person. Amen. <laughs> a better person. And we have found how to discern and know the will of God. It's right here. Would you agree that's very important? Yes. You'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Hallelujah. I think some people have tried to find the will of God in the wrong way. They keep asking other people, <laughs> wanting everybody to pray for them. <laughs> Bible didn't say you'd be transformed by fasting. People have tried a numerous other things. Well, I'm going to pray all night and all day and three days. Well, praying is good, but what will change you into a different person and cause you to find the will of God? Changing the way you think. A lot of folk would rather do anything except that. They'll climb a mountain. They'll swim the lake. They'll fast for 40 days. They'll pray for nine days straight. And they'll read the New Testament three times. No, if, if you don't change the way you think, if your mind's not renewed, then you're not going to be changed as a person. And the will of God is going to be 
hazy and, and difficult for you. We're going to believe God. Yes. We're going to get light. Yes. And, and the Lord is going to show us how to renew our minds. Yes. And we're not just going to be talking about it. It's going to be happening. Yes. While we're being taught about it. It's going to be changing us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe this verse is true. We will be able, we'll come to a place where we'll be able to discern and know what the will of God is. We'll know. And we'll be transformed. And people will say, boy, they've changed. They're like a different person. (laughs) They They have changed. What happened to them? <laughs> Got transformed. <laughs> I've been transformed. <laughs> the scripture says that the, the gods, uh, let me see. Today's English version, let's read that one. There's so many of these are good, but for time's sake. Today's English version says, do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world. Have you ever heard the term peer pressure? Oh, you hear this all the time, especially concerning kids and school and, and teenagers and everything else. Well, I got a flash for you. It didn't stop with high school and college. That's right. Hmm? There is a, a pressure to conform, to not rock the boat, to be like everybody else. Hmm? If they're using these new words, that you use the new words. If they dressed like this, you dressed like that. If they do this, you do this. There is a continuous pressure to conform. You know, there's, that's how they, they make parts for cars and a whole bunch of stuff anymore. Uh, they'll just take a piece of metal and they got these machines that got all this pressure and they'll just squeeze it and when they get through there's a fender there. They conformed that metal to that shape. Thank you Lord. I'm getting revelation. And that is what the Lord is wanting you to let Him do. <laughs> is to be formed in the likeness and image of Christ. But it's up to us what we let form us and how we choose what we let form us is by choosing what we think on and how we think. Thoughts are transforming. They haven't been esteemed like they should be. You know, we've been camping on the subject of words. And we've talked about that, that uh, far too many times people don't esteem words. They don't value what a word is. Well, what is a word? A word is a thought capsule. Think about it. A word, if, if somebody spoke to you something in another language that you did not understand, what would you get from it? Nothing. Nothing. And yet, their words mean as much to them as your words mean to you in your language, but you didn't get anything out of it, didn't mean anything to you. Why? Because it failed to convey that thought to you. So what are words? Words are thought containers, thought capsules. And uh, what's going on right now? A lot of us are on the same page. And uh, a lot of folks are, are getting things before I even say it. Why? Because it's not just my thoughts. 
the source of the thoughts I'm getting is in you. Just like in me. <laughs> That's why some things you get and understand before I have a chance to finish the sentence. God's thoughts. Oh, somebody say glory to God. God's thoughts. God's thoughts. Say it out loud. God's thoughts. Say it again. God's thoughts. What are God's thoughts? Whew. This thing has grown on me immensely just in the last few moments. <clears throat> uh, go to uh, Genesis. Genesis 6, 5. God made the earth. God's thoughts are revealed in his creation. We take a lot of it for granted because we've already seen it. But how, what does God think about? And what kind of thoughts does he have? He thinks flowers and trees and mountains and oceans. He thinks babies. He thinks life. You didn't come up with that. I didn't come up with that. Adam and Eve didn't come up with that. That was God's thought. Hallelujah. We, I think uh, when we get to the place where he's prepared for us, when we see heaven and paradise, I think some of it will be excited and glad to see. Some of it's familiar. Some things are like some things down here, minus the curse yes. and the death. Because he's the one who came up with this. Right. We see his taste. We see his thoughts. We see his ways in the earth. But after man fell, you know, in the beginning, God came down, communed with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. What were they communing over? How were they communing? They're sharing his thoughts. <laughs> Aren't they? How else do you commune? God comes down. Adam says, come on, let's go. That's uh, God. They come around him. Hi, God. Hey, Adam. Hey, Eve. And so what'd they do? What'd they talk about? His thoughts. They shared his thoughts. And it was beautiful beyond description. It was amazing. It was glorious. It was perfect. It was pure. Glory to God. Amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Have to talk in tongues and not, not tell. Hallelujah. That's right. But after they fell, well, how, how did they fall? Satan introduced other thoughts. Mm -hmm. Didn't he? Mm -hmm. You will not surely die. A lying thought, a deceiving thought, and they received it, and they thought it, and they acted on it, and they, they sinned, and it changed them into something. You know what it did? It conformed them into the origin of that thought. They, be, they, they stopped being just like the Lord, and they begin to be like the devil. 
whoever's thoughts you receive, you become like. And after generations of this going on, it got worse and worse and worse and worse until the whole earth was filled with ungodly, devilish thoughts and thinking. And Genesis describes it. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and what? Every what? Imagination of what? Of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That's when you know the destruction came. Now think about how powerful for evil a wrong thought is that it brought the whole creation to this point. The point of, of total destruction. Thoughts are not insignificant. This is one of the first areas our mind needs to be renewed in is the importance of the significance of every thought. Yes, thank you, Lord. No such thing as thinking on something and it doesn't matter and it has no effect and as long as I don't do it, it's no big deal. No. That is a lie. Yes. I said that is a lie. Yes. Whatever you yield to to think on, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Notice every imagination of the thoughts of the heart. He used that phrase. And this word imagination helps describe to us what a thought is. Helps define, I should say. What is a thought? Have you ever thought about it? <laughs> what is a thought? Let's characterize it. Let, let, let's define it. What is it? Let me tell you what it's not. It's not material. Is it? It's not physical. Well, if it's not material, what is it? See, people try to, uh, they, they've created this world called mental. What's mental? What is mental? The Bible talks about in Romans, we'll, we'll get to this eventually, being uh, carnally minded and spiritually minded. It doesn't give a third category. Thoughts, are, if they're not physical, if they're not material, they're spirit. And they come from different sources, places, but they're not physical, they're spirit. What is a thought? If you look up this word imaginations, it literally means in the Hebrew, a forming. A forming or a shaping. And it is just, it is the same idea in Genesis 2-7 when it says the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul before God formed, shaped man from the dust of the ground, where did man exist? Where was man before God formed him out of the ground? Where did that forming come from? Before God formed it in the earth, it, it was formed in Him. An idea, a thought, is a shape. It is a form, and it is a spiritual force that can shape something out of the spirit into the physical. Get the picture of a potter forming a vase. 
He's at the wheel. There's no vase. And yet there is. <laughs> Where's the vase? <laughs> well, the vase doesn't exist. Yes, it does. <laughs> the fact that the vase is created and developed and is beautiful and people proves it existed there. Its existence here proves it existed there. If it hadn't existed there, it could never have come here. And it wasn't formed when he put his hands on the clay. It was formed in the thought. It was shaped. It was formed. Somebody say glory to God. Thoughts are not insignificant. Thoughts are not to be trivialized. Every thought comes from somewhere. And every thought is endeavoring to form something and shape something. Every thought. There are evil thoughts. There are destructive thoughts, thoughts of death, thoughts of failure, thoughts of poverty, but there are thoughts of prosperity. There are thoughts of holiness. There are thoughts of life and freedom and deliverance. Somebody say glory to God. (laughs) I want you to think a moment about the power of these things. There are thoughts that you can begin to think and immediately it'll raise your heart rate. It'll raise your blood pressure. It'll make you perspire. Huh? And all you did (laughs) was think about this. Does it have power? There are other thoughts. You begin to think about them and you start to calm down. Begin to relax. Some thoughts, just the thought of it, thrills you. You begin to think on it, and it just thrills you. You can't help but smile. And all you're doing is thinking a thought. (laughs) Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I saw it just a few minutes ago. I came in here and y'all were all fine. Until, you know, you're okay. But then I, I, I begin to share with you God's thought that though your beginning was small, Amen. your latter end would greatly increase. I saw that thought come up in you. And you begin to smile. You begin to go, yeah, yeah. Right. Ain't nobody put money in your hand. What did that for you? Oh, but friend, that thought has the power to come into this realm and shape it and form it in your life. But I tell you what, the devil would sow a bad seed into you as well. There are thoughts that will absolutely pull the joy right out of you. Thoughts that will make, that will terrify you. And if you lay on your bed at night and think on them and ponder them, it'll rob you of your peace. It'll rob you of your joy. It'll put all your systems into overdrive. If you think, you think on them year after year, it'll make you old before your time. It'll absolutely strip you of your potential. Prevent you from being what you should be and having what you couldn't have. Somebody say thoughts. Thoughts. You and I are today what we have become, not what we have to be. People say, well, this is the way I am. You just have to accept me. You know, a lot of times you shouldn't accept the way you are. 
You try to get me to accept it. Right. <laughs> well, if you, have to, you love me, you just have to love me the way I am. Uh, uh, no, sir, no, ma'am. I can love you without loving the way you are. Right. You have to accept me the way. No, I don't. Nor do you. You can be transformed. I can be transformed. You and I are the way we are. We've become this way over a period of time. Think about the stuff you've done, any skills that you've developed. There was a time when that was a thought. The places, the associations, the relationships. Married folks. There was a time when you just saw them across the way and thought, I'd like to meet them. That's right. Come on. <laughs> I'd really like to meet them and get to know them. It was just a thought. Hallelujah. Turned into a relationship, turned into a covenant, turned into a family. Hallelujah. It was a thought. I think I'd like working at that. I think I'd like to learn how to play that instrument. I think I'd like. There was a time when you didn't know one chord, one note, nothing about it, and you had a thought. Hmm? I think I'd like to learn how to ride a motorcycle. <laughs> think I'd like. Think. I think. I think. I think. Look in Proverbs, please. What a glorious thought. <laughs> what a wonderful thought. Don't be conformed to this world. Don't let this world make you like itself. Don't become a cookie cutter copy of everything else and everybody else. The, you know, people that don't believe in God and don't know God. You are destined yes. to be different. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. You're supposed to yes. go upstream. Yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to be up when they're down. Yes. Say yes when they say no. Right. I will yes. when they say you won't. But we must realize how dangerous it is, these thoughts that are all around us. They're all around us. I mean, it's the, the, everything's permeated with them. Thoughts of fear, thoughts of selfishness, thoughts of deception. And all, it, it's everywhere. That's why it's good to have a place where we can come in here and shut the door. Yeah. And say, world, stay out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're only going to think mm -hmm. on what he said. Yeah. And yet we're not to hide and put our light under a, a bushel. We're supposed to go out and shine. Mm -hmm. But we, we, you need to read your chapter and you need to be getting his thoughts and reminding yourself of them on a, a regular basis. Because there's so much around you trying to press you, trying to conform you and make you like the whole unsaved world. Mm -hmm. Said out loud, I refuse to be conformed to this, world. to this world. I'm in this world. I'm in this world. I am not of this world. I, this world. I, refuse, I refuse to be conformed to, be conformed to, this, world. to this world. Make up your mind, I'm not, I'm not going to be like this. But, but what's, what's happening with you? I'm being transformed. What is transform? It's, it's the, the word that we get our understanding of metamorphosis. Just like caterpillar to butterfly. <laughs> it is an internal, cellular level <laughs> change. It is a complete change. That the, the original words bear that out. It is an entire 
uh, other translations bring it out, the complete renewing of your mind, entire renewing. Our thinking doesn't need, doesn't need to be changed a little bit. It doesn't just need to be modified slightly. <laughs> the word needs to come in there and tear out some stuff. Huh? We need some major stripped down renovation. Now see, that didn't happen when you got born again. There's people looking at me like, no, it didn't. You became a new creation in Christ Jesus. Your spirit became new, not your mind. And that has confused a lot of people. Bob, they knew something happened to them, but then next week they were struggling with some of the same thoughts they had before they got saved. And they thought, well, the devil come and tell you, well, you didn't even get saved. Look at you. No, that's not true. It wasn't your mind that was recreated. It was your spirit. And now as soon as you get born again, it's your job to do what you're supposed to do with your mind to let him renew it. We have a responsibility to do something with our minds and get it renewed. Can you say glory to God? In uh, Proverbs, did you have that place? Proverbs 23, verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye, neither desire thou his dainty meats. Verse 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with you. His actions and his words are not what he is. What is he? He is what he thinks. He's saying some things that are not representing him properly. Oh yeah, come on in. Yeah, eat, drink, help yourself. But he's thinking begrudgingly. And so he's not what he's saying and how he's acting. He is what he thinks. Your thoughts. Another translation says it like this. Young's literal. For as he has thought in his soul, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Our thoughts. Somebody say our thoughts. Our thoughts. There was a time this church was a thought. <laughs> there was a time Phyllis and my ministry was a thought. It was a thought. I remember we were back, what we'd have been, Phil, 18 years old in our little Marriott mobile home. We paid $3,700 for it. And uh, doing what we knew to do and, and got a hold of some word. Hallelujah. Mm. Heard things like redeem from the curse of the law. Yeah. Hadn't got over yet. No. <laughs> things like by his stripes oh, you were healed. Call those things that be not yes. as though they were. Right. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things uh -huh. that you'd prosper Come on. Yeah. and be in health even as your soul pros prospers. And we begin to grow, we begin to develop. And, uh, we got some materials from the Copelands and we got some materials from uh, Brother Hagen. And he began to, they began to send us their monthly publication. Well, there was a publication of the graduating class of that year. And they were all dressed in red on the front. And uh, uh, I picked up that little uh, magazine in our little mobile home. And I looked at it and just for a moment, a thought came across my mind. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great to be a part of a group like that and, and to have that kind of training and that kind of word put into you and, 
and that kind of pre preparation and to have that kind of an active part in, in the kingdom of God. Amen. That, that thought came across my mind. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be a part of that? And it lasted all of about 15 seconds. <laughs> and then I thought, <laughs> nah, nah, I mean, I'm a country boy doing this, doing that, and I didn't have enough money to get out there to the school, much less go. And... But where did that thought come from? Anybody know what? Where did that thought come from? Help me out. <laughs> but then what shot that thought down? It was another thought. What about that? Nah. You just, that's just wishful thinking, man. That ain't reality. You come back to earth, boy. Where'd that thought come from? And can you see that both of those thoughts are trying to shape me? Can you see that? One of them is trying to shape me and tell me, you could be used of God. You could have a part in the end time harvest. You, you could be in the ministry. And another one's telling me, no, you can't. You, you don't have anything. You don't know anybody. You can't do anything. Both of those thoughts have shaping power. Come on. I'm so thankful the Lord didn't give up on me. Just because I, I let that shoot his thoughts down. Thank God he knew how ignorant I was. He knew I was clueless as to what was even going on. And he brought it back to me. And he brought it back to me. And he brought it back to me. I wasn't getting it at all. At all. But he got this thought across to me about believing God and going out to their camp meeting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. That was the biggest step of faith we had ever taken. I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have a car that would make it out there. Much less the gas and, and place to stay and all that. We, no, we didn't have it. But we, the Lord had gotten enough faith in us through his words and his wonderful thoughts that we believed he could do a miracle. Yeah. And it, it, it would work out. Something would happen and we could go. And we believed. And we stood and we said it and we confessed and we praised God and we stood and we believed and I won't go into all the detail, but it worked out perfectly. I got time off. Phyllis got time off. Somebody loaned us their almost new car. We, we had a little bit of money. We didn't know if we had enough, but as we're driving down the road to go to the meeting, uh, she starts pulling out money. People gave her. I didn't. I start pulling out money. People gave me. We had plenty of money. Glory to God. Plenty of money to go, to stay, to eat, to come back for the whole week. Praise Glory, God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And uh, while we were there, he dealt with us to take the tour out on the campus there at Ramah. And while we were walking around on the on the campus, oh, that thought he'd been trying to get to me for a year and a half, two, came up in me strong. Hallelujah. And this time I didn't knock it down. Thanks. Come on, are y'all listening to me? And, and Phyllis and I talked about it. And I, I'm not saying we didn't wrestle with it a little bit more, but, but we in, eventually embraced that thought and we followed that thought. Has that thought shaped us? Hallelujah. Has that thought formed us? Yes. I can tell you, I was there and now I'm here. We're different people. Very different people. And there was a time when it was a thought and I thought, eh, okay, and pitched it over in the corner and went about my business. Should we pay attention to the thoughts the Lord gives us and not let other things overpower them and overshadow them and Knock them down. Let me give you a, uh, an identifier, one of many, of God's thoughts. When God gives you a thought, it'll excite you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said it'll excite you. Because it's wonderful. It's glorious. It's only after the initial excitement 
and you get in your head and start trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That you realize you don't know how. Yeah. And you can't. Yeah. As far as you can tell. And, and then, then if you let the other thoughts in, you're in trouble. Yes. Well, I want God to tell me and show me how he's going to do it. Because then it wouldn't require any faith. Exactly. That's right. He wants to give you a thought. Do you know that's why Abraham was his friend? Yeah. Got to hang with God? Amen. Why? Because he's the kind of guy God could take him outside and say, look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Hallelujah. See all them stars? Abraham? Yes, sir. It's a lot of stars. Sure are pretty. How many stars is that, Abraham? Oh, Lord, I don't know. Can't even see all of them. How, how would I know how many? He said, that's how many kids you're going to have. He didn't have any. Didn't have one. Looked like he couldn't have one. So you know what he says? Yes, sir. Great. <laughs> okay. Roman and I, you know, he, he struggled with it, you know, the, the whole story. But Romans tells us how he wound up. He was fully persuaded that what God had said he was able to perform it. Yes. He embraced that thought yes. with not one clue as to how God could do it. Right. And that pleases God. Right. Oh, that pleases the Father. If he'll bring you a thought and you'll get excited and not have one clue of how it could ever happen, but you still receive it. And you just cling to it and you go, well, yes, God could do it. I, how? I don't know how. I don't have to know how. He knows how. Yes. He knows how. Yes. He knows how. Somebody say, he knows how. He knows how. Does he? Yes. yes, he does. He knows how. His thoughts will excite you. His thoughts will thrill you. Yes. His thoughts are exhilarating. Yes. His thoughts, you'll laugh and cry and don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> His thoughts. Yes. Amen. Did you find the song? Yes. What are we talking about? His thoughts. Psalm 92.5. I'm liking this series already. I'm liking this. Psalm 92, 5. Oh, Lord, how great are your works and your thoughts are very deep, deep. How deep are his thoughts? Look into the night sky. Look across the Pacific as far as your little eyes can see, which ain't far. His thoughts are so vast. They're so wide. They're so high. They're so deep. And here's the amazing thing. He's created us with the capability to think on them. Paul prayed for the saints at Colossae that they'd be able to comprehend the height, the width, the depth of the love of God yes. that passes understanding. Yes. Why? He has created us with the capacity to embrace his thoughts and think his thoughts. That is huge. And we're not operating in the fullness of it of uh, at all, but it ain't over. This is just the beginning. I was talking with Phyllis the other day. We were riding down the road, and and uh, you know, preachers preach. And, and I, I said, you know, you and I have really changed in the last thirty years. Uh, we think different. We, we are able to comprehend some things we had no clue of 30 years ago. What about 10,000 years from now? Because <laughs> we're going to be around. What about 300,000 years from now? We won't be the same as we are now. Come on to think about how many would say the word has changed me. Hmm? 
And you're, you're talking about what? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years? Well, that's a flash. What about from where you are now, you just keep going and embracing his thoughts. And how many have read scriptures that didn't mean a thing to you 20 years ago and, and now you wept and cried and shouted over that verse? Hmm? Why? Because you, the, the verse is not what was lacking. It was your ability to, to comprehend his thought. And thank you. Well, how about your ability to comprehend his thought expanding for the next million years? <laughs> what will you be able to grasp? And what will that do to you? What kind of being will that make you? A son of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we will be like him. And we'll commune. We're not just going to be sitting around on a cloud playing a harp. <laughs> I guess if you want to sit on a cloud and play a harp, maybe okay. But that is not all you'll be doing throughout the ages. And it is. Anybody want to know what's out there? Yes. Me too. God's out there. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're not an ignorant unbeliever? limiting yourself to your little senses and little knowledge and so arrogant that if you don't understand it, it can't exist. That's pitiful, isn't that pitiful? I mean, it's bad to be dumb, but it's bad to be ignorant and don't know you're ignorant. I mean, that's, that's really bad. <laughs> what do they need? They need to receive his thoughts, don't they? And let his thoughts transform them Amen. into something else. His thoughts are very deep. Say it out loud, Lord, your thoughts are very deep. Psalm 139, turn over there. And the more you ponder his thoughts, the more you think on them, the further you see into them. And the more it thrills you, the more it blesses you and excites you. What if you don't think on them at all? What if God's not in your thoughts ever? Then you'll lead a very shallow life, won't you? Should we think about him in the morning? Should we think about him all through the day? Should we think about him when we lay our head on the pillow at night and when we get out of bed in the morning? And uh, Should we think about him all the time? Yes. Can you think about him while you're doing other stuff? Yes, yes you can. Yes, you, everything that you see can remind you of him. Yes. Hmm? Yes. If it's bad, you can remember his grace and how that all things are possible. If it's good, you can remember that every good and perfect gift came from him. And, uh, there's no beautiful thing but what came out of him. Psalm 139, 17. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. What's more in number than the sand? God's thoughts. And I am still with you. His thoughts. Oh, I can sense the Spirit of God pushing against the veil of the flesh. He has thoughts for you. <laughs> he wants these thoughts, He desires these thoughts to get through to you and me. Oh, the devil fights them. 
He wants us to be negative. He wants us to be defeatist, unbelieving, worry all the time, fret and yield to his thoughts and experience death. But God has a thought. How many know one thought from God? Would just show you how to walk right out of your situation. That's right. That's right. That's right. Maybe you've been embroiled in it for years. Maybe right. you see no way out and, and no answers and no hope. One thought yeah. right. from the Almighty. Come on, one thought from Him who made the heavens and the earth. His thoughts are light. His thoughts are life. And one thought from Him. And you just go, well, of course. Sure, and I'll just do that in the morning. Yeah. And it'll just start unfolding and just start working and just what it took the devil to mess up 10 years to do. How many of God could fix in a day? In a day, less. That's right. But we got to be open to his thoughts and closed. You know, at some point we're getting to 2 Corinthians where he said we've got to take every thought captive to the obedience. Somebody say every thought. Every thought. Then is every thought significant? Yes. Does every thought matter? Yes. Every thought. Every thought. Every, say, say every thought. Every thought. Say it again. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. Every thought. Because these thoughts are spiritual. And these thoughts are from somewhere. And if they're not from God, we got no business thinking them. And they're trying to form us. Everything about you, everything about me, the way I carry myself, the way uh, my, my southern drawl, the, the, the way, I, the phrases I use, the way I see things, everything about you came as a thought. It was a thought. You saw it, you thought it, you emulated it. You saw it, you thought it, you was conformed to it. Well, no matter where we came from or what we've been, now ye are the sons of God. <laughs> you are the sons of God. Of the Most High God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And he has thoughts. He said, I know the thoughts. Yes. I think about you. Didn't he say, I know yes. the thoughts. I think. What kind of thoughts? Anybody remember? What kind of good, good thoughts that will give you an expected end. Thoughts that will produce something in you so that you wind up a different way. People think, well, I, I need money. I need healing. I need this. I need. You need a thought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need his thought on the matter. Yeah. If you got that, everything else comes with that. This planet you and I are sitting on this evening, before it existed, where was it? <laughs> Every tree every animal, this chair. Before it was a chair, that was in somebody's mind. Hmm? Thank you, Lord. The car you drove over here in. We take it for granted, but there was a time when that didn't exist, and yet it did exist. <laughs> yeah. And before that thought wound up in some engineer's mind, it was in God. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every good thing, every perfect thing, every complete thing, everything that works and helps and is good, it came from Him. Amen. Everything, everything that kills, steals, and destroys, it came from the devil. That's right. It came from the destroyer. That's right. That's right. But before it existed here, it was in Him. And how did He get it here? How will there ever become such a thing as a space shuttle? 
jet that streak across the air, speed of sound. I mean, how did it, how did these things, they, they were in a person before they were on paper right. or in the computer or in steel or in wood. But before they were in that person, they were in the Creator. Aren't we thankful yes. for everything the Lord's given us? Yes. I know people are using technology and machines and everything else for evil, but they weren't intended for that. They were intended for good. The internet was not built to hurt people. It was built to get the gospel out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Hallelujah. And you could use it for some other thing, good things, but that's the main thing going on. Mm -hmm. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go back to Timothy. Hold your place in Psalms and go to Timothy. We're going to go from 1 Timothy 4 to Psalm 1, the first Psalm. Thank you, Lord. Don't be conformed to this world. That's not my words. That's not just Paul's words. How many believe that's the Spirit of God speaking? That's God talking directly to us. What did he tell us? Don't be conformed to this world. You be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God Said out loud, my mind's being renewed. My mind's being renewed. I, will I will know. I will prove, I will prove the, good, the good, the acceptable, the, acceptable, the, perfect, the perfect will of God. Will of God. I'll, think I'll think it. I'll know it. I'll know it. By, His grace, By His grace, I'll do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And how will it come? A thought will come. Phyllis and I were, you know, about this time of the year, earlier, winter time, over in a condo here in Branson, praying about the will of God. And this church was a thought. No money to speak of. Certainly not enough to do that. Didn't know anybody here. But we had a thought mm -hmm. from the Almighty. Hallelujah. Just a matter of months ago, that church in Sarasota, it's a thought. Yep. Now it's a piece of land. Amen. Now it's a building. It ain't a church. It will be. Yes. Huh? Yes. And it won't just be a building. Be full of people. Yes. Like you Amen. and me. And they'll be glad to hear about God's thoughts. Yes, yes. They'll be excited. Yes. And their life will change. God. And they'll quit just living for themselves. Right. And they'll quit just being only aware of this life. And yes. it'll, their mind will open up and their spirit will open up and they'll love God. Yes. They'll yes. praise Him and they'll serve Him. Yes. And in a few days this will be over with and we'll all shout together. Yes. Throughout yes. the ages. And God will share his thoughts with us. And after we grow up for another 100,000 years, <laughs> he'll be able to share some things with us that we couldn't have even related to right now. Do you think we'll be mesmerized? Do you think we'll be in awe? Do you think we will praise and worship him? And here's the neat thing. We could do it for nine days straight and not get tired. We could just shout to the top of our voice for a month and not be tired and feel better. Yes. <laughs> What's with them? Oh man, they've been shouting like that for 10 years. <laughs> Let's go join them. <laughs> Why? God showed them something. <laughs> they got one of his thoughts. Because his thoughts are deep and they're precious. Their life itself, light itself, love itself. 
1 Timothy 4, God was sharing his thoughts through the Spirit of God, through Paul to Timothy. And he told him this, 1 Timothy 4, 15. 4, 15. What did he tell him? What did he tell him? To meditate. meditate on these things that he'd been telling him, these thoughts. Meditate on these things and what? And give yourself wholly to these things you're meditating. And what will happen? You're profiting that your profiting may what? Appear to all. Now, how's it going to appear to all unless it happens out here where all could perceive it? Oh, I want you to see something, friend. It was meditation. Now it's appearing. He said, meditate on these things and give yourself completely to them and what will happen? The profiting of it, the benefiting of it, the increasing of it will appear to everybody. Yes. They'll see it. They may not understand it and know how it came, but they'll see it. Yes. They'll see the increase, yes. the profiting, the benefiting. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Does that sound like transformation? Yes. That's exactly what it is. Psalm 1, I'm thinking about closing. It's a thought. <laughs> we'll have to discern where that thought came from. <laughs> Which is another message. How many know we're going to have to uh, identify the source of these thoughts? Aren't we? This, this, can you see that's going to be a big part of it? We've got to find out where these thoughts are coming from and we've got to tag them before we just send her out and think on them. Right. And say, oh, no, 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 I can't think on that. I'm not going to think on that. Right. Why? Because we should understand if I think on that, what's going to happen? It's going to mold me. It's going to shape me. Somebody was talking about uh, uh, some criminal activity and some people that were had committed some terrible crimes and, and they were, uh, the authorities were discussing it and saying, you know, that these individuals, they had found out in their personal life, they had just watched hours and hours and hours of these terrible crime movies and awful perverted things and they were asking the question, did they think that that, that had any effect on them? And the <laughs> do you have to ask? Some of them committed the very things they saw in these movies and in these things. Why? They immersed themselves in it. They thought it night and day. They meditated on it and gave themselves wholly to it. And their perversion appeared to all. Do you see this? You can only hide it so long. You keep feeding on it. It'll make you into that. You'll become that. Oh, no, I can handle it. You're kidding yourself. Yeah, that's right. I can handle it. Nobody can handle it. That's right. That's right. Oh, but you think about Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. You, you immerse yourself in everything Jesus said and every word that he did until you got red letters just swimming around your head day and night. I mean the epistles and the thoughts and redemption and healing and increase and righteousness and you will become that. It's not a fairy tale. It's not high. The Bible said as we behold like in a mirror the glory of God we are, we are what? We're changed into the same image. We're changed into what we're looking at. 2 Corinthians 3. Man, the glory's in here. Oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Oh, let's just lift up our hands and praise Him. So, Father, we worship you. We worship you. 
Oh, we worship you. How precious are your thoughts to us. We want to know what you think. We care what you said. We want to know your thoughts. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We seek your glory. We seek your will. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Psalm 1. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What is the counsel of the ungodly? That's their thoughts. What kind of thoughts are they? What's an ungodly thought? Ungod is no God. God's not in it. It's an ungod. Not a God thought, but an ungod, without God. Blessed is the man that doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, and he doesn't stand in the way of sinners. Now, perhaps we'll get into this. If you understand somebody's thoughts, you learn their ways. <laughs> Do you want to know the ways of the Lord? We have to find out how He thinks. We find out how He thinks and we'll begin to see, not just, we won't just see what He has done and view Him from a historical perspective. We begin to learn how He thinks and then therefore begin to understand some about His ways, how He does things. And, and you can already see how this would make it so easy for you to discern His will. Because when something comes up, you go, oh, that's Him. How you know that's Him? Well, that's how He thinks. How you know how He thinks? Because you've been thinking His thoughts. That's Him. That's the way he does stuff. How do you know it's the way he does stuff? Because that's what he said. That's his thought. You learn how he thinks. You begin to understand his ways. Then you're not clueless about the will of God. Somebody tries to tell you this is God. You go, oh, that's not his way. That's not the way he does things. That's not the way he thinks. Who are you? You think you know how God thinks? <laughs> we can begin to know how he thinks. No, we don't claim to know the, the breadth of, of, of his thoughts, but we can begin to know. If what is the mind being renewed? If not beginning to know how he thinks what he thinks. If he, if too much of the church world has just given up and said, well, you know, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts and, and they didn't read the rest of the passage or anything else that went with it and just said, well, we can't think like God does. He's holy and perfect and high and we're dumb and clueless and that's just where it'll be and maybe over yonder by and by we'll get a God thought. No! This book you got in, in front of you, why did he give us that? The Spirit of God, the author, why did he put him in us? So we could know. Hold your place in Psalms. Go back to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, or over I should say. You know religion, man-made religion, is just one of the most hinder some destructive things in the world. 1 Corinthians 2. People take a verse, take a half a verse, and make it say something it never said. You use that as a basis for not believing God and for not even trying, quitting and laying down. Is it possible for you to think some of God's thoughts and understand some of His thoughts? 
Is it possible? Yes, yes it is. It's supposed to be happening on, on an increasing uh, basis. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. As it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And people stop. They put up a stop sign. They build a wall there. And they go, see, 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 see. You just never know. <laughs> you just got, you, eyes not seen, ears not heard. It's not even in and in to your heart and to your little mind. And God is big and you are not and you just don't know and you're not going to know. You little haughty, too big for your britches, man. You just, you sit down because you're dumb and you need to admit that you're dumb. And stay that way and that's just the way it is. If they would only read the next verse. Somebody help me. Let's be brave. Come on. Let's be brave. Let's go to the next verse. <laughs> Let's go where no religion has gone before. Come on. Are y'all ready? Come on. Let's go <laughs> to verse 10. <laughs> Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It's not entered into the heart of man, of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But, yes. but, 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 but God has revealed them. Them what? Them what? The things that I hadn't seen and ear hadn't heard and hadn't entered. The, God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Said out loud, I can think the thoughts of God. I can understand of his ways. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Certainly we don't claim to have arrived or will arrive in this lifetime. Thank God we got the rest of eternity. But we don't have to wait till then to start. We need his thoughts now. We need to know how he thinks to deal with things in this life. We need to know so we can have the right kind of relationships and so we can raise our kids the right way. Come on, are you listening? So we can be the right witness and, and find the will of God and do what we're supposed to do. You're not going to do any of that without getting his thoughts. That's right. That is right. Sit out loud, Lord, I love your thoughts. They are precious to me. Glory to God. Back to Psalm 1. Psalm 1, verse 1, let's read it again. Blessed is the man. Anybody want to be blessed? Blessed. Blessed. That means empowered, enabled to prosper and to succeed. That walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. There are thoughts you don't need to hear. Hmm? There are thoughts you don't need to be around. We need to treat it seriously and not just sit hour and hour after hour on the phone or just stay and let people fill our ears and minds with this junk there are places we don't need to walk. There are places we don't need to stand. And there are places we don't need to sit. Because it's ungodly counsel. There are thoughts we should not think. Verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Now we have not only the law, we got the New Testament. We got the whole word of God. His delight, is your delight in the word of the Lord? Does his word contain his thoughts? 
And in his law, does he what? Meditate. Does he what? Meditate. He meditates. Day and night. What did Paul tell Timothy? The Spirit of God through Paul tell Timothy. He said, uh, meditate in these things. And give yourself wholly to them. What would happen? Your profiting will appear to all. Look, this is the same thing. Meditate in it day and night. What will happen when you meditate in it day and night? You're pondering God's thoughts all the time, day and night. You don't think on the scornful and the sinner and the ungodly. You refuse to be conformed and think that and talk that and live that and be that. It starts trying to mold you and shape you and to sit down and shut up. You're nothing. You'll have nothing. You throw it off and you go, no, I ain't sitting here. I ain't sitting here. <laughs> I'm not hearing that. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm thinking all things are possible to him that believes God supplies all my needs. I'm thinking he that has begun a good work in me will perform it. He will complete it all the way. He's the author and he is the finisher of my faith, my life. And I'm going to meditate in that every service. Every time the church doors open and the preacher's preaching something worth hearing, I'm going to meditate on it. I'm going to hear it. And even once in a while, I might play a CD or something. <laughs> Why did I say that? Okay, you meditate on it for the uh, 30 minutes, hour and a half, two hours, depending on where you go to church. <laughs> and then you don't until next Friday. That leaves a lot of time. Hmm? And you're going to be thinking something. You don't just go around night and day thinking nothing. You're thinking something. What are you thinking? Where did that thought come from? What is it doing to you? Come on, read it again. He'll do what? What will he do? He's going to meditate on it when? When? Day and night. Well, it's either day or night. <laughs> well, it ain't quite night. Well, it's day. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't quite day. Well, it's night. Uh -huh. So if it's day, do you know what to do? Yeah. Meditate, Meditate yeah. in the word of the Lord. What if it's night? Do you know what to do? Yeah. Let me ask these guys over here. Yeah. If it's daytime, what, what do you do? Yeah. Huh? On what? Word. What he said. Things that he said. If it's nighttime, what do we do? Meditate. Meditate. Think on it. Ponder it. Meditate. When? What if it's the middle of the day? <laughs> huh? Late at night. It's either day or night. And if you meditate upon it, would that affect your mind? Would your, would your thinking change? And what would, what would be the result? Come on, read, read the next verse. And his profiting will appear. Come on, are y'all listening? Yes. His profiting will appear. He will be. Now he was thinking. Now he's being. He was meditating. Now he's being. He shall be. He wasn't but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. How many rivers mean you got more water than you will ever, ever need? You can just, if you're an apple tree, you can just soak up water and make apples until the ground is covered with apples and you don't have to stop because you got plenty of water where that came from. You can just soak it up, soak it up and make apples in the morning and apples at night and apples every day. Whatever you are. 
You can bear fruit. You can produce it that brings forth fruit in his season every time. And his leaf shall not wither. When other people are drying up, you don't. Why? Well, why are they drying up? To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Why are they drying up? We don't even have to know the details to know they're thinking on things they shouldn't be thinking on. They were thinking it wasn't going to work. They were thinking they're not going to make it. They were thinking death and failure and defeat. And it disconnected them from the rivers. But this is the guy who won't stay in the seat of the scornful or the way of the sinner or, or the counsel of the ungodly. He won't stay there. You can't make him stay. You stay, he goes, la, 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 la. I'm not hearing that. Show me the door. Show me the door. <laughs> I will not die but live and declare the works of God. I'm coming through this one more than a conqueror. More. He always calls it. Yeah, but you might not and you better watch. La, 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 la. He always causes me. Always. 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 Yeah, but you just never know. Get behind me. How many of that is the counsel of the ungodly? And it's dangerous. It's dangerous. Dangerous. Why? Because if you get to thinking on it, it'll form you. It'll shape you. Next thing you know, you'll lose your peace. You'll lose your joy. You'll be shaken. You'll be upset. But this guy, <laughs> soaking up the water, People say, man, what a drought. Things are getting burnt up all over the He said, my leaves are green. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They don't wither. Everybody's leaves wither. Not mine. Come yeah, on. Not mine. Everybody leaves wither. No. My leaves shall not wither. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Some things go, some not. Whatsoever he does shall prosper. That's right. That's right. Somebody say glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Say glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, stand up on your feet. And say glory to God. 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 Glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. Glory, 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 glory. Lord, I give you glory, I give you praise. I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you thanks. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Come on, tell him, just close your eyes and speak right from your heart. Tell him how you value his thoughts. Oh, Lord, how precious are your thoughts to me. I desire them. Come on, tell him out of your own mouth, out of your own heart. Say, Lord, I, I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you have thought about everything in every area. Your thoughts are right. Your thoughts are true. Your thoughts are perfect. And I want to know. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing them with us. Allowing us to think them. Revealing unto us by your spirit. 